بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ون آف دی موسٹ وائڈلی یوز پروڈکشن فنکشن ان اکنامکس اینڈ اٹ از دی کوپڈاگلس پروڈکشن فنکشن ویلکم ٹو مائی ویڈیو نمبر ون ففٹی سیون اینڈ Uh, you will learn a detail of the Cobb-Douglas production function in this video. Kindly watch the complete video uh, so that you can learn about the background, history and uh, properties of Cobb-Douglas production function. I will not only talk about the Cobb-Douglas production function, uh, but I will also define what is production, what are inputs, what is output, what are average product, what are margin products of the inputs, total output, graphs and uh, schedule of uh, these uh, average marginal and total output and later on I will discuss Cobb Douglas production in a greater detail. So let me start with the definition of production. Production refers to the transformation of inputs into outputs. our products an input is a resource that a firm uses in its production process for the purpose of creating goods or services a production function indicates the highest level of output q that a firm can produce for every specified combination of inputs that is physical relationship between inputs and output while keeping technology constant at some predetermined state. Mathematically, we can represent a firm production function as Q is a function of L, K. That is, the firm produce only one type of output Q with two inputs, labor and capital. The quantity of output is a function of or depends on the quantity of labor and capital used in the production. This is what do we mean by the production function. Output refers to the number of units of the commodity produced. Labor refers to the number of workers employed. Capital refers to the amount of the equipment used in the production. And we assume that all units of labor and capital are homogeneous as well as identical. Technology is assumed to remain constant during the period of the analysis. Total average and marginal products. Total product is the total amount of uh, the output that is produced during a given period of time. Total product will change as more or less of the variable input is used in combination with the given amount of the fixed factor. Average product or AP is the total product divided by the number of units of the variable input used to produce it. Margin product or MP is the change in total product which result from the use of an additional unit of the variable factor. Here you see output with one fixed input that is capital and one variable input that is labor. So the first column shows the variable amounts of uh, labor. The second column shows total product. The third column shows margin product. And the fourth or the final column in this table shows the average product of labor. These are the curves. The geometrical representation of the total product is shown by total product curve. Uh, this red one is the average product of labor and this green curve shows the margin product of labor. And these graphs are the geometrical representation of uh, these data. The total product curve is based on this. The marginal product curve and the average product curve are based on these two columns. Uh, this is about uh, total product. 
marginal product and uh, average product here is the detail with labor time continuously divisible we can smooth total product marginal product of labor and uh, average product of labor curves the total product curve increases at an increasing rate up to point a past this point the total product curve increases at a decreasing rate up to point c and declines thereafter that is after c the total product curve declines the marginal product of labor rises up to point a becomes zero at point c where the slope of the total product is zero and is negative thereafter the average product of labor raises up to point b because the slope of the ray from the origin to point b is uh, the greatest and after that the slope declines so the average product of labor raises up to point b and declines thereafter but remains positive as long as total product is positive love diminishing returns love diminishing returns states that as additional units of an input are used in the production process while keeping all other inputs constant the resulting increments to output or total product begin to, do, to diminish beyond some point that is after a in the bottom diagram as the firm uses more and more units of the variable input with the same amount of the fixed input each additional unit of the variable input has less and less of the uh, fixed input to work and after this point the marginal product of the labor input declines stages of production usually there are three stages of production now in this diagram you see uh, from this point to this point r this area constitutes the first stage of uh, the production function and that is stage 1 for the labor and this is the range of the production for which increases in the use of a variable input labor cause increases in its average product then there is movement between b and c that constitutes the second stage of the production and uh, here it is this area and this is the range for which increases in the use of a variable input causes decreases in its average product while values of its associated marginal product remains non negative and uh, this green area shows stage 3 of production for labor input and it is the range for which the use of a variable input corresponds to negative values of its marginal product the production or output elasticity of labor the elasticity of output with respect to the labor input measures the percentage change in the output for a 1% change in the labor input keeping the capital input constant and that is given by partial of q with respect to l times l divided by q or since partial of q with respect to l is the marginal physical product of labor so the output elasticity of labor is equal to the marginal product of labor times l divided by q minor rate of technical substitution when labor and capital are continuously divisible and we can Uh, compute or calculate marginal rate of technical substitution by taking the total differential of this function which is equal to this and uh, we will set this equal to 0 because uh, movement from one point to another point on the isoquant does not change the output so change in the output is 0 and uh, when we simplify this then finally we get that uh, marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to the ratio of marginal physical product of labor divided by marginal physical product of capital and in uh, consumer theory marginal rate of technical substitution is equal to marginal rate of substitution and uh, marginal rate of uh, marginal product of these two inputs in consumer theory is equivalent to marginal utilities of uh, x and y here is the some background of uh, the cope douglas production function and it says that uh, during the period from 1900 to 
Charles Cobb and uh, Paul Douglas formulated and tested the Cobb Douglas production function through various statistical evidence. The Cobb Douglas function form of production functions is widely used to represent the relationship of an output and uh, two inputs. Let me also tell you about the history of this production function. According to Paul Douglas, the first formulation of the Cobb Douglas production function was developed in 1927. While seeking a functional form to relate estimates he had calculated for workers and capital, he talked to mathematician and his colleague Charles Cobb who suggested a functional of the form y is equal to a l raised to the power beta k raised to the power 1 minus beta which was previously used by Wicksell, Wicksteed and uh, Walrus. Although uh, Paul Douglas only acknowledges Wicksteed and uh, Walrus for their contributions. Estimating this production function using least squares method, Paul, Paul Douglas obtained a result for the exponent of labor equal to 0 0.75 which was subsequently confirmed by the National Bureau of Economic Research to be 0 0.741. Later on, in 1940s, prompted them to allow for the exponents on capital and labor to vary, which resulted in estimates that subsequently proved to be very close to improved measure of productivity developed at uh, that time. Douglas presented the results of these findings along those for other countries at his 1947 address as president of the American Economic Association. Shortly afterwards, Paul Douglas went into politics and was stricken by ill health, resulting in little further development on his side. However, two decades later, his production function was widely used, being adapted by a renowned economist including Paul Samuelson and uh, Robert Solow. Both of these economists are Nobel laureates in economics. The Cobb Douglas production function is especially notable for being the first time an aggregate or macro production function had been developed, estimated and then presented to the profession for analysis. It marked a landmark change in how economists approached macroeconomics for a microeconomics perspective. In its most standard form for production of a single good with two factors, the function is y is equal to a l raised to the power beta k raised to the power alpha, where y is total production, l is labor input, k is the capital input, a is total factor productivity or efficiency parameter, alpha and beta are the output elasticities of capital and labor respectively. These values are constants determined by the available technology. Uh, alpha and beta are also known as uh, distributive parameters because the, it can be proved that uh, alpha and beta are the share of uh, capital and labor in the total output. Output elasticity measures the responsiveness of output to a change in levels of either labor or capital used in production, other things remaining the same. For example, if alpha is equal to 0.45, a 1% increase in capital using would lead to approximately a 0.5% increase in output. Sometimes the term has a more restricted meaning requiring that the function displays constant return to scale and it means that doubling the use of capital and labor will uh, also double the output. Uh, this holds if the sum of alpha plus beta is equal to 1. If the sum of alpha and beta is less than 1, then it means that return to scale are decreasing. And if a plus beta is greater than 1, then it means that return to scale are increasing. If we assume perfect competition and that uh, alpha plus beta is equal to 1, uh, alpha and beta can be shown to 
be the capitals and the labor's shares of output. In its generalized form, the Cope Douglas function models more than two goods. The Cope Douglas function may be written as f of x a product i varies from 1 to n x i raised to the power lambda i where x varies from x1 to xn. So n stands for the total number of goods. x1 to xn are the non-negative quantities of good consumed and produced. Uh, lambda i is uh, elasticity parameter for good i. A is the efficiency parameter. The Cope Douglas production function given here shows Q is equal to A L raised to the power beta 1, K raised to the power beta 2, E raised to the power U, where Q is output, L is labor, K is capital, U is stochastic disturbance term, E is the base of the natural logarithm. Uh, the parameter A is the scale of production and it shows total factor productivity or efficiency parameter and uh, betas measure how amount of output will respond to changes in the labor and uh, capital inputs. Uh, here is another Cope Douglas production function and uh, our problem is to obtain an estimated function q hat is equal to a L raised to the power beta 1 hat, K raised to the power beta 2 hat. Uh, but if you take the natural log on both sides of uh, this equation, then we get natural logarithm of Q is equal to natural log of A plus beta 1, natural log of L plus beta 2, natural log of K plus U. And uh, this production function is known as the double log or log log or constant elasticity. Uh, production function or log linear model. There are some properties of the Cope Douglas production function. Number one, the estimated coefficient beta 1 is the elasticity of output with respect to the labor input. That is, it measures the percentage change in output for a 1% change in the labor input holding the capital input constant. Similarly, the estimated coefficient beta 2 is the elasticity of output with respect to the capital input holding the labor input constant. The sum of the estimated coefficients beta 1 and beta 2 gives information about return to scale. If the sum of beta 1 and beta 2 is equal to 1, then we have constant return to scale. And it means doubling the inputs will double the output, tripling the inputs will triple the output and so on. If the sum is less than 1, then there are decreasing return to scale. And if the sum is greater than 1, then there are increasing return to scale. Here is the Cope Douglas production function. The estimated Cope Douglas production function for the Taiwanese agriculture sector for the period 1956 to 72. And uh, the output elasticity of labor is 1.499. And the output elasticity of capital is uh, equal to 0 0.490. And if we sum these two, we get 1.989. And this is greater than 1. So uh, there are increasing return to scale for the Taiwanese agriculture sector. Uh, this is a, a brief discussion about Cope Douglas production function in which I defined production, production function output, inputs, the various forms of Cope Douglas production function, the graphs and schedule of uh, marginal product of labor, average product of labor, total product of labor and so on. I hope this, pre this presentation was useful for you and uh, if you like the video, kindly share this with uh, other friends and uh, students. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel, Research Made Easy with Himi Khan, and uh, click on bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest videos in the coming time. Thank you and uh, good night.